Hello, everyone. Hello, Paul. Thank you for joining. Hello. How, are you? How are you doing? I'm, I'm doing great. So my head's still bobbing to your intro music. Yeah, a little dance yeah, before we start. Yeah, it's a good track. Thank you very much. I always find myself kind of dancing along. I might have done 50 odd of these things, but I always um, have a little dance myself. A whistle as well. <laughs> awesome. I enjoy the whistling part for sure. Anyway, um, yeah, cool. Thanks for joining. Much appreciated. Um, I know everyone is busy. You are busy, but uh, and it's the middle of the day for you, right? Um, but it, it is. Yeah, it's uh, it's noon. It's straight up noon uh, here on the Love here it. in Southwest Washington. So basically, I'm stealing a lunch break. Uh, what are you going to uh, do? That's okay. I've got get, <laughs> get my water and my 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 liquid lunch here. Love I'm it. good. I'm I'm hearing an an echo. How do I how do I get rid? Oh, of you, maybe you have the um the uh you to the actual session of YouTube open at the same time. Yes, I do. That's exactly yeah. what's going yeah. on. Let me go get rid of that. So I did I did that on the second one. I, I was second or third. I, remember, I was speaking to Bernat, and I was accusing him. I was like, Bernat, can you put on headphones? I'm getting feedback from you, and it was just me listening to like two things at the same time. Yeah. All yeah. right. That's good. Common. Yeah. There's like a four yeah. second okay. delay. Yeah, yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Well, it's good to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Uh, I've looked forward to this. I, I've followed a number uh, of of sessions you've done in the past, and cool. um, I, I'm I'm honored to be added to your your roster of of interviewees. Thank you. Fantastic. I appreciate it. Um, and have someone of your caliber on the show. It's a fantastic. Thir Thirteen MVPs I read today. Thirteen times MVP. Yeah, Hi. yeah. Lucky number thirteen. Yeah, as I, I tweeted, tweeted before, we between us we have thirteen MVPs. It's very impressive. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Yeah, I, so, I have to restack the discs on a regular basis because the cat knocks them over. <laughs> it's like a, it's something that's meant to be special for you, but at the end of the day, like everything in the world, it's just a toy for a cat, right? That's true. Yeah, yes. <laughs> sounds about right. Um, do you want to like? I know. You know, do you, do you want to introduce yourself so like people know who you are, who are listening? Sure. That'd be cool. Yeah, um, uh, Paul Turley, Microsoft MVP. I'm uh, I'm a, a director of uh, uh, our BI and analytics practice at Three Cloud Solutions. So we're a Microsoft partner and consultancy, and that's just a fancy way of saying that I'm now a people manager, and I don't get to do real work anymore, even though I really love Power BI and do everything I can to be hands-on with it, but uh, yeah. I uh, I started out uh, in in the '90s in the IT business. I'm I'm old, so I've been doing this for a, for a long time. I started we, out we using never suggested. <laughs> yeah, yeah, SQL Server seven, so OLAP right. services and then analysis services, and fell in love with reporting services just before it was released, and uh, somehow I, I I invested a lot of my weekends and evenings writing books about reporting cool. services I've written, or at least uh, uh, led the authoring of, of all of the Rockspress books on reporting services. And wow. I'm not crazy enough to write technical books anymore, but uh, <laughs> so I, in my career, I kind of oscillated back and forth between either being an instructor or um, doing consulting work. And, and now I manage a team of, of uh, very capable Power very BI nice. consultants, we have about 50 people on our team. Instead of saying you can't bother to write the books, you could rather say you, you've earned the right to don't have to write those books anymore. You know. Yes. Well, I am. I am actually doing the tech review for a, a SQL Server book, but uh, cool. It's it, it's a much more relaxed position to be in than being yeah. the author. <laughs> so, so you don't have <laughs> that, the entire burden of responsibilities isn't on your shoulders. You know. Right. Yeah, right. I like it. Um, yeah. Someone said I can't believe it's taking so long. I I know. I, I I agree that you know, I just no, go no, through no, like no, lists no. Of, of names and so. I actually I had to send a couple of apology emails the uh, the past week because I went through this 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 period of being very very disorganized. So I would contact someone and say I'll send you an email, and I forgot to send a couple of emails which I felt terrible about. Um, also, like there was Win who I had on the show a few weeks mm -hmm. a few months ago, and mm -hmm. uh, I contacted him like I think literally almost exactly one year before you actually came on the show, because I just kept forgetting to follow it up. I'm, I'm ex normally extremely disorganized, but doing this show has really improved that. So there you go. Um, Good. You have a mission. I asked you, exactly. exactly. Uh, yeah. Johnny said, are, are you an analytics engineer? This is the... Uh, uh, I, I, I suppose you could categorize me as an analytics engineer. Sure. 
does anyone know what that actually is anymore? Because there are so many words to the, to the jobs, etc. It, it gets confusing. That could describe 50 different jobs. All right. Yeah. Consultant, analytics, engineer. Cons mm. Yeah. Yeah. I, it, it, Johnny says, how, how do you spell MDX? So, you know, if you search the web for MDX, you'll, you'll get information about Mazda vehicles. But uh, no, or is it an Acura? I, anyway, that's, you, you, yeah, you're, there's yeah. not much out there for, for MDX anymore. Thank you, Donald. I think Donald's stalking me. He, he shows up everywhere I go. Yeah. Maybe I'm stalking Donald. Yeah. It's a good point. Thank you who, for joining, Donald. Who, who, who arrives first? Um, the worst thing to search for is M, by the way, if you're doing any sort of Google oh, search yeah. or, or Bing search. Uh, if you want M, it's not findable because it just something, something M. It's you know, Power Query M. It, it, ne it never comes up. It's very confusing. Search for well. Alex Powers. That, that's easier. Mm -hmm. Very good point. Because he always has the answers for, for M. Absolutely. Very true. Mm -hmm. Um, this might be one of these conversations when I have this show that I try, I really try and I struggle to keep up with all the technology talk um, because my my knowledge is so um, Power BI based that when I manage to write like a, a string together a decent um, SQL query, I'm very proud of myself. Mm -hmm. I, had, I, I, had, I had to ask one of my colleagues, uh, I think yesterday or today, like the most basic SQL because I just, I, I, I learn it and then I don't use it. And um, so, yeah, I'll, I'll try my best to keep up, I promise. So with the questions, I might put them, put them up there, and I might not even understand them, to be honest. But if you do, which you will, that's the most important thing. Well, it's, it, you know, it's, it's tough. I, I think over the course of my, you know, almost 30-year career, I've probably learned a, a dozen or more languages, probably more. But, you know, you, 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 you think in DAX, and then you have to think in SQL, and then you have to think in Visual Basic. And, you know, now it's Python or TypeScript or I, you know, it's, it, it, it's a lot. And, you know, how do you, how do you parse a date, you know, in, in SQL versus DAX? You know, you have to co constantly context switch between yeah. these languages that we use. It's tough. I find it hard enough just to go between um, DAX and M, to be honest. The amount of times I'll be writing DAX and I'll be like, you know, then, else, and I, no, that's not that's not going to work in this situation. Um, uh, people, don't, people don't realize that, you know, Power BI was, was the culmination of multiple tools from different teams at Microsoft. So, you know, uh, M, the data mashup language, was derived from TypeScript, and that was developed by... You know, the er, early on, the team that used to create SSIS and mm -hmm. then DAX, you know, evolved from MDX, but, you know, mm -hmm. they stopped and they, they started over again. But, you know, it's it's kind of Excel function like and it's kind of SQL like in, in some mm -hmm. different ways. But, yeah. you know, they married those those tools together in Power BI Desktop, you know, formerly Power Pivot in Excel, formerly mm -hmm. Analysis Services Tabular. So it's not like the whole team got together and said, "How do we, how do we create these two languages that are, are easy to, to transition from one yeah. to another?" This completely brand new concept of everything it just, yeah, didn't happen. I, yeah. Donald, I, I don't believe you when he says um, Bing for the rest. Really, Bing? I don't, I, 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 I don't believe you. Okay, it's yeah. it, we know these days it's it's, it's Google or Chat GPT or whatever it's called. GPT, is that correct? Chat something. Yeah. I don't know. They, Chat these are the tools, which apparently is being integrated into Bing. Is that correct? I think I, 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 I have I have heard wind of that, yes. Very nice. Very cool. And neither confirm nor deny. No, and also, yes, decent as judged by. But yes, it's a good point. I can call my, my own things decent hey, Jeff. because I'm 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 judging them. Very good point. We have uh, a lot yeah. of a lot of familiar uh names joining joining this live stream. The usual I'm very, yeah, yeah, I'm I'm very appreciative of of the, the these loyal people who come to watch my live screens every week. It mean it means a lot to me. Um, yeah, Chris Wagner, how you doing, Chris? Yeah, it's it's very nice. It's it's a it's a makes my Thursday evenings a bit more um, enjoyable. I used to really before I used to do these shows, I used to really dread them, you know, because I I would get very nervous about them. Um, but it's it gets better with time, you know. Um, oh, so you, you seem very, very comfortable with the format, and you're a you're a great moderator. Oh, you're very good. Thank you so much. <laughs> All these comments. You, you're going to make my my face even more pink than it, than it usually is. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 
So here we go. Here, here's the question. Do you think Power BI Report Builder could do with an overhaul? I suppose this comes back to the whole um, products that are do, developed do, over time. Do, do, I, do, I, do I think it could or, or do I think it will? Um, I, well, you know, I, that's, that's a tool that has evolved through many, many generations as SQL Server reporting services grew up and out of Visual Studio and into Report Builder and now it's part of the Power BI stack. So uh, yes, I, I, I think it, it could. Do, do I think it will? I, I think we'll probably see a more streamlined paginated report building experience sometime in the future. It might be web-based. I'm not, not telling you that I know that it will be, but I, I think we'll see a streamlined tool and report design experience sometime in the future. Will Report Builder ever go away? I, I don't know. My crystal ball, ball's kind of cloudy, but you know the <laughs> the thing is about RDL reports is that that there's so much goodness to be had. You know, everything can be based on an expression, and you can do some really crazy, advanced, complex things. But mm. how do you how do you simplify the design experience and yet give you know very advanced developers access to all of those capabilities and i can't imagine that they would scrap report builder and start over again mm. and build another developer centric tool so that's a hard thing to do yeah, but i think that there sure. will be a, a streamlined tool sometime in the future makes sense i get most of my knowledge about this sort of thing from from johnny winter who's who's posting there in the comments because um yeah he had all the videos on on report builder and and on the, this sort of reporting, which was completely alien to me. Um, so he's actually saying here, yeah, I was I was paginated report building today. There you go. I love it and hate it. The current incarnation is still is, is, is <laughs> boogie. I, I I I don't disagree, and yeah. uh, it is a result of evolutionary design. Yeah, and that's that's what has brought us to the current state of a lot of Microsoft products. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's 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 not like 20 years ago, a team got together and said, this is exactly what it's going to be in 2023. Yeah, yeah. It was interesting because I didn't, obviously, when I first discovered this, you know, paginated reports and stuff, I didn't realize that. And um, I was doing this like a, a course, it was like a PL 300 or whatever it used to be called, uh -huh. preparation course, which I didn't end up taking because I'm just so lazy. Um, and this, these paginated reports came up. And one of my questions was, like, why does it look kind of so old school? You know, like if you compare it to like Power BI, why does it look the way it does? And say, it's not, it wasn't built for this purpose. You have to understand it was this, and then it was that. And I was like, oh, oh. okay, that, that, that makes more sense to me now. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Yeah, the, the RDL specification, that was defined in 2003. And so okay. you when know, you think about the state of, of programming and technology at the time, that was, that was, we were seeing a, a transition from classic ASP to ASP.net. Mm. Um, you know, everything was XML based. Uh, the 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 programming language that was popular at the time was Visual mm. Basic. Mm, okay. In yeah. in uh, the .NET framework 1.0, and so that's that's when reporting services evolved. Mm. And then it you know it it evolved in stages since then, but they didn't ever scrap it and start over again. They just kept building on the same foundation. Mm. Which okay. is good and bad, you know. Yeah. You, it's it's a very feature laden mm. um, reporting product, but there's just layers and layers and layers of complexity to it. Yeah. I had a <clears throat> yeah for sure yeah. Mm -hmm. I have like a like a a, a gap a, a black hole of technology for a certain period of my life when I was like um, probably like thirteen through sixteen. I was really into like. HTML code and that sort of stuff. I was like, you know, mm -hmm. I was writing batch files on a 386, 486 and um, very much enjoying it. And yeah. then something, then, then something, and I'm, it's, it's, it's quite a long winded story. So I'll try not to tell too much. Then something happened, which completely traumatized me. And I didn't touch any code for such a long time that I didn't actually get back into it until I was in my, in my late twenties. So I had this really like 10 year gap of just like no like technology related stuff. And um, so it's interesting to me when there's all these things that I could have progressively learned, I just stopped. I stopped. I was building like HTML websites, all those like classic websites you saw like back in the back in the nineties. Like this is my house. This is my cat. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, but I was doing like like HTML, HTML mapping those like pictures, and I like, was learning like some really cool stuff. And then um, yeah, this thing happened, um, which was pretty. I'll, I'll tell the story quickly. That's okay. Yeah. 
Sure, sure. So the, a neighbor of ours, he was um, this guy who was, um, I really wasn't aware of the entire story at the time. The guy was called Martin McGartland. And you can Google this guy. He's got a couple of books, 50 Dead Men, 50 Dead Men Walking or 50 Dead Men, or something like that. And um, he was working undercover for the British government within the IRA. This is the Irish Republican Army. Okay. Mm. And he was living in the street behind us because he went, he, something, something happened, he escaped and he was living there. And I was actually building a website for him. Okay. And I didn't, I wasn't aware of the need for security and stuff on websites because, you know, I was like 15. Um, and I think this is all true, by the way. Um, I think through my website, they actually managed to find him because of the location of all the credit card services and stuff. And then one morning I woke up to the sound of like five gunshots and this, and he was just like shot and he was like bleeding out in our back lane. And me and my oh family, my had, gosh. yeah. So me and my family all had to go and rush down and, and plug his wounds and call the ambulance. And uh, he, he didn't die. Um, but really interestingly, I was also named as a suspect because I was running through the streets directing the police and the ambulance services to where he was shot and I was covered in blood. So people just saw this like person running around the streets being covered in blood. And um, yeah, that kind of made me not want to do any kind of website or development for quite a long time. So that was kind of me, my first foray into kind of building website. Um, wow. Managed to get someone shot five times. So, <laughs> so you well, you know, that's not a story that many people can tell. <laughs> But, you know, I, I think we all we all have, you know, it, we just within the course of our careers, you know, those 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 pause periods, you know, and may, maybe it's because life took us in another direction, started a business, went and did something else. I mean, you know, it, I, I think it happens to a lot of us. Yeah. And um, sure. yeah, well, I remember I remember web design back in the day. I mean, I was I was doing some of that as well. Or every every page, all the text was centered you know, and, and you had these, these buttons that looked like they were big rounded pills because it was yeah. so cool that we could yeah, make yeah. things look like they were 3D. It was cool. And yeah, boy, back in the day. I, I, I'll tell you, I, I kind of circa that, that same time, I, I, was, I was a Boy Scout leader and I, I thought that um, it'd be cool to start a business where uh, Boy Scout troops could use the web to manage their, their registration records. Okay. And, cool. uh, and so I, I created this website and I, awesome. I commoditized it and I, I actually bought a server and put it in a co-located location and uh, I, I hand coded the website, but I was handling wow. the login and the passwords and everything just in regular, just mm. in regular code. I, you know, I knew nothing about security and encryption and it, it, it became clear to me that I was handling a lot of sensitive data and that there <laughs> was liability involved and yeah. Yeah. decided to get out of that business. Yeah, it's yeah. it's, it's, a, it's a, your, your story is far more impressive than you know. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it was. A, yeah, I'm gonna. <clears throat> this is. A, yeah, I mean, this. It, it sounds like it's made up. I promise it's true. You can actually, actually, in I think the second edition of one of his books, it actually dedicates it to uh, my family. I'm pretty sure there's a second version, and they and they added a section on the end. So you can. It, you can. It's Googleable. You can definitely wow. find it. Googleable. Uh, it's awesome. Googleable. It's, which, and Googleable is such a fun word to say as well, right? <laughs> okay, yeah. so you 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 reminded of, of me of something that I wanted to slip in because I, yeah. I know that I, I know that you live in Berlin. Yes. And and I so when I was a kid, we we lived in Germany. My my dad took a job where he cool. was uh, he was running a, a high school completion and GED programs for the U.S. military all over Europe. I was 10, 11, 12 at the time, and I mentioned I was into Boy Scouts. And we went to Berlin. It was mm. 1973. So this is going to be telling about how old I am. So I was 11 years old, 1973. And cool. uh, obviously Berlin was a, a much different place at that time as it was divided. Yeah. But I, I really, really wanted a piece of the Berlin Wall. Nice. And, uh, you know, to, to, to go up to the wall, you know, under under, uh, you know, an East German guard tower, you know, with a, a, a soldier with a machine gun and to take a rock and try to break off a piece of the wall, you know, <laughs> was, was, was quite a task. But, yeah. um, but I, I did it. I did it. I, this awesome. is one of my, my favorite little pieces of, of memory. so cool. 
My my Love dad it. watched the guard, and and he, when he would go to the other side of the guard tower, I'd beat on the wall to try to break <laughs> off this, this little piece of concrete. But yeah, I'm I'm pretty proud of that. That's amazing. What I love about that is that you got your piece of wall and actually hammered it yourself out of the Berlin Wall, whilst the Berlin Wall still stand standing and there for a good purpose. Most people who have a piece of the Berlin Wall will like buy it from some from some right. vendor. Yeah, post nineteen eighty nine when the wall came yeah. down or and eighty six, whatever it did. I'm not sure if this is true, but I did read once, and I can kind of believe it, that they've sold so much of the Berlin Wall that if all the pieces were put together, the Berlin Wall would be like two times its original length or something. Um, because it's like a bit of stone painted Berlin Wall. And everyone's going to believe it, right? Because it's right there. But you're, you're like, no, no, no. I guarantee mine is real because I hammered it out myself. <laughs> I did. I did. Yeah, That's proudly awesome. So. That's very yeah. cool. And yeah. uh, so how, how long were you uh, over here for? If you, I missed that, if you've already said so. Two years. Okay, nice. Yeah, but it was back, back in the 70s. Uh, yeah. I went to, I don't know, seventh and eighth grade, I believe. Have you been back since the since the, the war fell at all? You know, I, I, I had, just traveling through Europe, um, I, I visited Europe uh, a few times, just, you know, uh, doing training classes. I, I did a, a sequel Saturday pre-con in, in Lisbon. I was supposed to go to Dusseldorf for the pass, um, ah, okay. yeah. the, the, the pass European conference in 2010. Mm -hmm. That was the year when the, the volcano erupted in Iceland. <sighs> they shut everything down. So it was our, our first virtual yeah, okay. uh, presentation opportunity. All right, nice. Yeah, yeah it must be in the way 2009, was that? Was it? That. Circa. Yeah, I'm not. Some about then. Yeah. I, was, I was still a flight attendant, so I was having a great time just partying instead of flying. Oh, you know? awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, it, it, it paid the bills. I couldn't speak German, so I needed a job, and they paid pretty well. And I, I remember the, all the flights were canceled, of course, but we didn't know if they were going to be still canceled the next day. So we're kind of like, can I have all this alcohol? I'm just going to have it anyway, just, just in case. <laughs> Well, I am, I am coming back. I am coming back for uh, the Power BI cruise in April. Ah, really so nice. Coming into Copenhagen and then taking the cruise to Oslo and, and back. Oh, that's cool. I, I, I was really tempted to try and go with that, but I just don't have sea legs. Uh, I, by which I mean I vomit massively when I'm on boats. Um, <laughs> which I, I know it's, it's, I'm going to repeat my, my bad, bad jokes, but I do see the irony given the fact that my surname is Ferry. Um, but I don't like being on boats because they make me vomit and it's no one, no one needs to see that, especially like, you know, a power BI or any kind of uh, presentation, just me yeah. sitting there quietly crying as I vomit into a bag at the back. Yeah. Uh, sorry to happen. hear that. Yeah. I, you know, so, uh, just for, for those of you who aren't familiar with the, uh, whether it's the power BI cruise or the sequel cruise, they've been doing the sequel cruise for several years. So the exactly. idea is that, that, that we, we all go and, and, and present or take uh, training classes uh, on a cruise. And uh, so I it's did. a business trip <laughs> <laughs> and we, we take training classes for a few hours a day and it's a tax write-off. I, I didn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, yeah. No, it sounds, yeah. Like, it sounds like a lot of fun. It's, a, it's unique, yeah. you know, it's like a, a you know, a, a moving location it's it's a great idea i always wonder mm -hmm. about the um the, which what's the one in germany called the um data grill the um which is basically yeah. that all seems interesting to me because it's basically like you know they have the bar and they're just doing lots of grilling lots of barbecuing at the same time presenting tech stuff and i'm like that sounds like a great excuse just to go and drink beer eat some meat and uh, well you listen. know i i i think i think that underscores uh, an important element about the the just the Power BI and the Microsoft data community. And that is that we, we are a community. And, mm. you know, so, you know, not only do we have these conferences and training opportunities, but I mean, you know, the I, I've been running SQL Saturday events um, mm. for I don't know how many years, 15 years or so here in the Portland area and our local user group. But there, there's so many of these events that have kind of, you know, they, they, they've evolved their own little character. Mm. And, you know, so D Data Grillin, I spoke at Data Toboggan uh, oh, last cool. weekend, uh, you know, at 4 a.m. my time. <laughs> nice. It's always fun. You yeah. Know, 
sent, you know, virtually to a group in, in Europe. Uh, yeah. Thank you for scheduling this in your evening. So I don't didn't have to get up at, at 3.30 a.m. again. Absolute pleasure. <laughs> it always, th this time of day, I think, actually kind of seems to suit pretty well. Because for me, it's early evening. So it's when my kids just go to bed. For the U.S., it's kind of day midday-ish. And the only people who kind of suffer are people like who are even, you know, Australia, stroke New Zealand, who are, I think it's quite yeah. early in the, in the morning for, for Kerry and, and, you, and you Jeff. You can't make it work for everyone. It's, you, can, you, know, you can't, you can't. But I, you know, I, I admire, you know, uh, Reza and Layla run the, the, uh, the Power BI Summit. And, yes. you know, it's, it's, it's 24, mm. you know, it's 24 hours for what, three Very days impressive. straight. You know, yeah. what, what an amazing effort. Yeah, but, but I mean, my point in all of this is that we, you know, we we have a community of people who, mm -hmm. you know, we're not only professional colleagues, but we're we're close friends. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I look yeah. at the list of attendees, and I'm thinking, you know, friend, friend, friend. I mean, these mm -hmm. people are, you know, pretty close to. And Jeff as well, friend, 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 Jeff. Yeah, and then Jeff. <laughs> <laughs> um, we put no, a you, D at the end of his name. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> Yeah, but yeah, seriously, you're, you're, you're absolutely right. This is the, an amazing thing it's about not just the, the way the community, you know, reacts and, and responds to one another and how they can make you feel involved. And when you don't know something, they don't make you feel stupid. They just, you know, inform and, and, and teach. But mm -hmm. people like yourself who are like, you know, creating events and uh, setting up, help setting up that community, the community is there because people like yourself, you know, have always been there not always but you know for a long time have been there kind of developing and creating relationships and reaching out and it's a it's a it's a really wonderful thing so i think yeah well it's very it's very genuine you know i, yeah. I think uh you know this is what we do professionally you know mm -hmm. we we all need money to pay the mortgage and to buy food and take care yeah. of our kids but um you know when when that crosses over into our personal lives and mm -hmm. and we have lasting friendships and you know, when somebody needs help with something, they can go tweet a question or, or mm. reach out through a forum like this, or, you know, mm. or perhaps the, the live stream that, that uh, Adam and Patrick do on Saturdays. Yeah. You know, people are willing to step up and help. And it's not just because we're obligated to. It's not just mm. because it's our jobs. It's because we truly want to support each other. Yeah, it's true. Very yeah. true. And yeah. also, you have this. There's the hashtag SML. There, it's true. This Saturday, Saturday morning learning. They're also a, a fantastic mm -hmm. group, group within yeah. themselves and in the communities. So, I, yeah. And I mentioned this just as as we were getting ready to do this session. Um, mm. You know, I, I had I had a, a disruption in in my plans last year. Um, some of you know, a couple of years ago, my wife and I went out on the road, and we were actually living in a Class A RV and traveling. Was working mm. full time. It was lovely. It was during the pandemic, mm. and actually able to go to a few events and interview people and things. And all of that came to a grinding halt when my then twenty six year old daughter became very ill, and we actually lost her last year. And it was it was this horrible, horrible experience. I mean, it was just a, a life changing mm. event to deal with a, a huge traumatic event, but. Mm. Um, Members of this community in particular just mm. got it. And they mm. it, it there was just so much support. And I say that not to kind of bring the mood down, but to say, no, no, you know, all. this is something very, very serious mm. that has happened to my family and I. And this family, you know, this community family connected with me mm. and has shown an immense amount of support Absolutely. and continue to. Yeah. Just it makes me want to give back. Yeah, yeah, and I mean, uh, first of all, I'm extraordinarily sorry to hear that. That's I mean, I just, we haven't been so connected, so I I wasn't fully aware of that until before we went live a few minutes beforehand. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, it's just um, I can't have anything that's even comparable to that, of course. Um, but to be in a community or to feel that you're in a community where you can really truly express yourself and show and not have to hide these these, these sort of things you know i i do mm -hmm. find it immensely important uh, of course i'm not part of any other you know professional communities if you will but i do agree in that regard that i, I never really feel i have to like 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 hide anything or like not express anything you know because people are very supportive and i think so 
Yeah, yeah, that was I, my I love that. <laughs> I I love that moment right there where that music came. Up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'll I'll get back to her, but um, no, it you know I mean the 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 community is very 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 genuine. You know, and, yeah. and whether you know whether you're a you know a database administrator, you work in an IT group, or mm. you know you're you're a, a, a business data analyst. Um, I think that you know the community that is evolved around these tools mm. is just comprised of of, of good hearted people who want to support each other, and mm. um, it's just a very very genuine thing. Yeah. And I think a lot of us want to make sure that it remains that way. Yeah. And and that's why we you know we organize events, we speak at events, we reach out to each other. It's mm. an important mm. thing. Most definitely. Yeah. I mean, I I um I also mentioned to you before before we started that where I had um Kurt Bueller on uh, f again a few months. I also say a few months ago because mm -hmm. I can't remember. Um, but it was a few months ago, and he, we were talking a bit about mental health then and, and the need or the importance of actually expressing yourself and um just talking about these sort of things, you know. Because I I personally I am very much a sort of person where I do need to express myself. I do need to talk, and really the only time. Mm -hmm in my life where I haven't done that was during the pandemic where I was very much of this thing. I can, I can do that. That's fine. I can manage it. My kids aren't going to school. I can manage it. I can work. I can start work in the evening at six o'clock and I'll work until 5 a.m. That's fine. I can mm -hmm. manage it. And it was just, it was incrementally more, you know, and I got to the point where it seriously affected my marriage like for sure, because it was just too much. And um, so I was looking that the company offered um, like counseling. They said, if you need it, call this number. So you know what, I'm gonna do it. The timing just seems to seems to be right and I really need it right now. And it was just someone saying, you know, um, you know, if you think you can take a lot, but what is a lot if it gradually increases? You can't like take everything just because you can take a lot. If someone throws you like 15 more things, doesn't mean you can take those things. And I was just trying very, very quietly to to take that on my own. And it like crushed me. And yeah. I, re I really had to remind myself, talk, reach out, speak to that person. And I, I start, I, I again made the effort to do that. So we, we all we all need to. And, you know, and, and I'll, we're. We're, we're not all the same. Our stories aren't the same. Our problems aren't the same. And, you know, Absolutely. a lot of us, you know, particularly mm. us dudes don't talk about, you know, we, we, mm. we don't talk about things like this. Yeah. Um, so, it, yes, I have a counselor as well. You know, I've, I've, I've had to dealing with the grief of my daughter's loss. Of course. Yeah. Um, you know, but I, I also have friends uh, who mm. I can I can phone up and, mm. and just, hey, you know what? I need to mm. chat. And exactly. um, it, it's extremely helpful. Yeah. Um, we should talk about Power BI. What's that? <laughs> I don't know. It's this. It's this tool. It's this. Thing. Never heard of it. <laughs> Actually, it, it, yeah, you're, you're right. We should. You know, but it reminds me. A very good friend of mine um, from my, um, my my job. She she'd been to a. Uh, uh, she's a lawyer. She went to like a, a conference, or like a, a, a meeting or something once, talking about tools that we can use at work, and it was just this really funny moment because. We were at that time not so close as we are now, but we were friendly. And she came back from the meeting and she was talking in this big room, like of people who, of course, knew me and my team. And and she was saying, Oh yeah, learned some really like cool stuff um about how you use these different tools to measure certain things. She's like, Have you heard of this thing called like Power BI? And I was like, Are you are you joking or are you not joking? And I was like, I heard of it a little bit. And she kept she start, started explaining it to me. I was like, Oh no, no, I'm I'm joking. I've I I have i have heard of it, I've done it. It was just this moment where she had just like this, like, have, have you heard of this? And I was like, yeah, I, I've, I've kind of heard of Power BI yeah, a little bit. So. A little bit. A little, little bit. bit. Sure. Um, yeah. Anyway, yes, yeah, let's, let's, let, let's talk about Power BI. I'm going to ask Jeff's favorite question, okay? Because Jeff loves asking this question. And I, if I get it wrong, I apologize. What's one thing that you would like to see in Power BI, or one thing that's missing from Power BI that you'd like to see? See, he's already, there you go. He's, he's brought it up as I'm saying it. What's um, your number one missing Power BI feature or tweak, Paul? I got you, Jeff. You impressed? Get integration. Ah, okay. Yeah, fair enough. Oh, good. No, <laughs> I, I, I think we can mention this because yeah. uh, it was it was announced last week. It was announced and then it wasn't announced in the uh, the Power Platform Wave One 
Mm. roadmap for 2023. There was a brief mention that um, DevOps and CI/CD integration is coming yeah. to the Power Platform, and we've known that there's been talk about it for a long time. Mm. That, then the product team of you know they they created deployment pipelines, and you know they're mm. they're making some effort in that direction, but. Uh, mm. um, from from what I understand, I, I think that that announcement wasn't supposed to take place. That it it was a little premature. It was like a, it was. You're right. That it was like a throwaway sentence because it was like a paragraph about the the yeah. general uh, the general direction, and yeah. it said increasing integration, blah blah, and then it mentioned like it or something. Yeah, it's true. It well, was so, you know, I I'm I'm reminded, and I think a lot of us are reminded on a regular basis that. The, the largest audience for Power BI are not IT developers mm -hmm. and, you know, database professionals. You know, it's not not the traditional IT crowd. You know, 80% 80, 80 at least of Power BI users are, are, are desktop, desktop data jockeys. Mm -hmm. You know, they're, they're Excel users and accountants and, and then, you know, people who use data in, in, a, in, a, in a much more informal fashion than mm. perhaps those of us who, who've grown up in IT circles. Mm. So Power BI has to entertain both of these audiences. It has to serve the needs of the person who just needs to sit down and click, 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 import some data and visualize it. Mm. And, you know, people like, you know, the circles that I come from where it's an IT shop and we have an analyst who gathers requirements and then we you know, we scope a project and we build and deploy. And, you know, those are two very, very different audiences mm. and different disciplines. Yeah. And, and I, I live very squarely over here in the enterprise camp. Mm. And, you know, that's what I blog about. That's what I teach about. But, you know, there's that that mm. that other big audience that's important. Yeah. This thing, you're right, it has a very, very broad audience and or use, usage base, whatever you want to call it. And because of that, the way it's developed or the requests or the expectations are sometimes wildly different, you know, like what people want to see, what people want added from what someone like yourself, your request will be like, you know, much more technical. Uh, other people just want different visualizations, you know, so it covers such a broad range of topics um, mm -hmm. across the, from, from data, everything with, from data really, which is quite interesting. Um, yeah. And that's why for me, sometimes it's quite hard to say what Power BI actually is. You know, back in 2017, you could, it was a lot easier. But right. now to, to say what's Power BI, you can't that's just say- The, to, the story know. of the the four blind men and the elephant, you know, it's it's a rope, it's a- well, ah, yeah, right, yeah, 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 yeah. What an elephant is, and one will go up to the leg and say, oh, it's, it's a trunk of a tree, and the Shit. other will, you know, touch the sides, oh, it's a wall, you know, it's a rope, or it's a snake. Yeah, you know, but, but Power BI is that kind of tool. It's different things yeah. to different people. Um, for for me, it 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 is it, it is components of an enterprise solution. Hmm. And so the you know the things that that I typically speak about, blog about, and and try to kind of press forward are what you know what 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 are the definition of best practices and standardized practices hmm. that are perhaps not guaranteed, but but likely to increase the, the likelihood of success mm. when you're dealing with large volumes, large audiences, and projects that need to be scalable and durable and you know, managed by generally an IT shop. Mm. So those are the things that, that I spend most of my time thinking about and, and what I try to direct my team at 3Cloud you know, to, to standardize our best practices because we see a lot of the same mistakes, yeah. you know, over and over again. Which are the most common mistakes you see? I'm just curious. You, you mentioned that, so now you you sparked my curiosity. Lack of dimensional modeling. Ah, okay. The biggest biggest mistake. Yeah. So I I have in one of one of my my new presentations, I have a slide that shows a table that's about three miles <laughs> wide, you know, with 600 columns and in great big letters it says no big fat tables. <laughs> Or big, yeah. big wide tables. I guess that's more politically correct. Yeah, yeah. We I get you. A, a lot of a lot of people either either don't understand the the the, the core tenets of star schema dimensional modeling, mm. or just don't know how to get there from whatever their data source is. Mm. And and that's I mean Power BI Vertipak you know tabular the tabular model engine was born of the star schema. 
out of mm. you know Kimball-esque mm. concepts. And uh, when you try to take a big white Excel spreadsheet and shove it into a data model and then visualize it and interact and try to get insights, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. It starts to work, but then it stops working. Yeah, you, you either get got to get someone to train you, or you got to learn the hard way. Right. You know, yeah. I went. I, I went the route of the hard way. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have these people who cut their teeth uh, with another product that might be the French word for table, and uh, you know, it, like that, yeah. it's a different different concept, different approach. Yeah. True. True. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's um, actually my wife is currently learning. I mean, she's, she knows how to use Power BI, so she's looking at these concepts as well. And I really enjoy watching someone through the learning process. You know, um, I enjoy teaching, but I'm intentionally not like teaching my wife. I'm kind of let, guiding her as she as she learns. You know, because learning to learn is obviously very important. Um, seeing where where to find your resources and how to Google or Bing um is is a hugely important thing and I, I do think that's one of the th things if you're getting started from a certain from a certain perspective like if you're more on, on on the business end actually learning how to teach yourself for me was quite a bit, not an obstacle but one of the most interesting things because i think if you haven't been in a situation before where you've had to learn lots of different concepts and bring them together it can be quite challenging you know and mm -hmm. um, Power BI does have those lots of different concepts. You've got you know, your dimensional modeling and then you're calculating and then data cleaning, all these sort of things. And you've got to like learn multiple skill sets to be able yep. to, at the end of the day, put, put the pretty pictures on the data, right? Well, as, as, as a Microsoft product, there must be 25 different ways to do everything. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been true. <laughs> but, I really, I, you know, there, there, there are things that work with small sets of data, and there, you know, there are techniques that work for, you know, very simple reporting needs. Hmm. You know, you know, which which include just import the spreadsheet and throw it into, you know, a, a visual. Yeah. But as it evolves, as your reporting requirements become yeah. more complex, and as your data volumes grow, then these standard best practices become more and more important. Yeah, you have to throw absolutely. things away, learn from them, and then start mm -hmm. over. That's part of the process. Mm -hmm. This is why, I mean, this is maybe a, a, a thing I shouldn't say, but I was, when it comes to these like best practices that are, that are drilled into you when you're using Power BI, one of them being the the, the thing with um, auto date time, right? Mm -hmm. As in, yes. don't use it. No. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly. I mean, the thing is, I would say for most people, with standard report, it's not that big a deal. However, because it can become a big deal, just don't do it. Just, just switch right. it off, you know? I completely <laughs> agree. Yes. Plus, plus. Yeah. It's just because for a while, I was just kind of like, oh, it's fine. It's not close to me. Oh, I've got these, all these nice hierarchies and stuff, and it's fine. And then as you develop, as you learn, as the data gets bigger, and then the, 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 the rows become huge. You're like, oh, but now I've got to go back over and change everything. And that was a terrible mistake. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, so getting it right from the from the very start is um, yeah, very important if you can. Yeah. And learning learn, learning to learn from your mistakes also. So um, here, learning to learn that's an interesting topic. Did I bring it in the right chat? Nope, you yeah, brought the wrong one. Learning to learn that's an interesting topic. That could be a cool thing for like a talk or something like for a session. I'm not sure. Someone can steal that if they want. If they want. You know, learn I've I've I've. I've I, I've seen presentations at conferences and SQL Saturdays yeah. on on how to learn, where to go, mm -hmm. you know, how how to take a blog post that might have some good ideas but might not necessarily mm -hmm. answer all the questions, and how do you how do you evolve that into a learning experience where you actually, you know, mm -hmm. learn patterns? I, yeah, I, that's that's a very important topic. Yeah. We, we we hire, you know, our, our company has grown very quickly. And I'm not trying to, to make this a promotional thing to the company I work for, but it, it's just a reference point for me. You know, we, we've worked about 700 people now, or probably twice the size that we were wow. two years ago. Yeah. Very nice. Um, but, you know, that's, we, we, we hire senior people who have a lot of experience, and we also do some, some uh, college graduate um, recruiting. And so... You 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 have mm -hmm. you have these two bodies of people, one who have a tremendous amount of experience, and with that 
or are kind of set in their ways. You know, they're used to doing mm -hmm. things their own way. You think about a tool like Power BI that just gives you so much latitude. You know, mm -hmm. every one of our senior consultants, architects, principal architects tend to say, well, I've got my best practices. I've already figured this out. Mm -hmm. I'll do it my way. Mm -hmm. And then we have less experienced people who come into a project and they just need a checklist. You know, we just need a set of standards to say, just always do it this way. You know, never, ever, ever use auto date time and mm -hmm. always pound your data into a star, you know, always have mm -hmm. a date dimension table. You know, I, I mean, there's so many things that could be on that punch list, but it, I, it, I, I think it kind of firms up my belief that having one good way that's repeatable is better than having seven different ways and you know one of them might be more right mm. than than the good way but learning one method that always works is better than learning seven methods that may sure. or may not i would like to see more focus on the why as well though i have to say oh, yeah. That's i think important. there's a there's a lot of um it's easy to see posts and um especially if you look at like, linkedin twitter these sort of places where it's very just kind of like don't do this don't do this and then the question is, but why? It's nice to educate. Uh, that for what reason is it is it bad? Not just there's a bunch of people who are in this community who are, who are keep saying things like, "Don't use auto date time, use star schema, pie charts are bad." This sort of thing, you know, just to kind of because it's something that people just repeat. Um, so I think, yes, the why is important basically because it helps you understand actually what you you're dealing with as well. Yeah, but I think I think I think in every one of those categories we can get down to the why just through some simple analysis. You know, why are pie charts bad? Well, pie charts are bad if you have 60 different data points. Yeah, yeah. You know, if you have six data points and you need to show proportions, mm. pie chart's not such a bad thing. Don't hate, don't yeah. hate. <laughs> the, 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 the pie chart was another example. I think it's easier to find people talking about why pie charts are, are bad rather than a nice ex explanation for a beginner as to why a star schema is good or why auto date time is, is, is bad mm -hmm. and actually let's get a, a, I'm not saying the resources aren't there. They are for sure. But because there's a lot of chat about that, there's a lot, people mention it quite often. I think the ratio of mentions to actual nice explanations for people who need to learn about those concepts would, would be good as well, for sure. Um, well, this one, we, just... we, we, we live, we live in a world where information is, is so readily available through mm. the internet. But uh, I, I think I think that there's a tendency to just read the headlines. That's true. Yeah. And you know, Good so point. you get to blog post, and it you know, it, you read the first paragraph that says, "Oh, you know, always use this visual, never use this way." Okay, well, I'll just do that. And you know, <laughs> and, and why is on page three? Yeah. Or it's yeah. some link to some some yeah. article or some book. Fair point. Yeah. I was going to bring up something from uh, that Kerry said because I agree. Actually, um, auto date time is awesome for quick visualizations. It's not worth my time to create date, date not data, date tables. I agree with that. If you're making some nice, beautiful visualization, then of course auto date time is perfect, right? Um, but if it's going to be scale, if most, yeah. every feature uh, exists mm. for a reason, yeah, this exactly. is a good example. Yeah. Though I uh, at the at the the, the the fear of repeating myself from I think probably every show in the past few weeks. I really don't like the feature where the the relationships uh, are created when you load data automatically, because I do think that takes away from learning about creating your own relationships. And if it just if it just loads and it's there, uh, it really that drives me crazy. And I'm repeating how myself. Hard, but... How hard is it to create relationships in a dimensional model? Yeah, and the concept of how you do, but why you do it, like the logic is there, yeah. right? Because if you, you you could essentially this is the idea that I had. When you load data into Power BI, it should take you directly to that page. You shouldn't have to click to get to it. You should load the data and it should actually direct you there so you see it and know what you have to do and helps you understand. Mm -hmm. and just, that's just, so this is, this, is the moment, this is the moment in any discussion with, with product team leaders mm -hmm. where they say, oh, well, you know, go post that on ideas.powerbi.com. You know, and then we all roll our eyes. It's like, well, yeah. Like I just I mean, did, yeah. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> yeah there are 10,000 ideas out there. And, yeah. you know, in this whole sea, you have to prioritize it. And, mm. you know, do we expect a change, you know, next month? Mm. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at this point, I should say that the work that is being done by Miguel on the um, 
updating of visuals is, is fantastic. So I, I have to I give am, him some, some kudos to that, yeah. I'm very, very happy that he's on the product team. Yeah. 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 He's, uh, he has a mind for visualizations. We're talking about Miguel Myers, who uh, uh, spent uh, many, many years as an independent consultant doing, uh, doing visualization work. And he just, he's okay. an artist. He just has a, has, a, has a mind for that kind of thing. And so he's driving, driving that within the product team now. Yeah. Um, Jeff made a comment when you talk about interns and trying to find it, and I found it. Talking about this to my bird, John, who's hiring, I suggested young interns are great because they are still in learning mode. Yes, yes. Makes sense. Their, Makes their sense. minds are sponges. Exactly, yes, exactly. You can either, either, either teach them the wrong way or teach them the right way to do things. Exactly. They haven't done it. They haven't learned all these terrible things that you learn as you, as you get as you get older, etc. I had a yeah, teacher once cool. who said uh, we, people like you know practice makes perfect, but he always said no, it doesn't. Practice makes permanent. If you practice badly, then it won't make you perfect. So <laughs> practice is per makes permanent. I say, all right, fair enough. So you permanently bad. Yeah, exactly. So it's um, perfectly bad. Perfectly bad, exactly. <laughs> 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 oh man. Anyway, um, yeah. Nice. I'm pleased we actually finally got to talk about Power BI yeah. toward, towards the yeah. end. Of that. Thank you for reminding me. I, I often forget, you know. Yeah. No. No worries. I'll, so I'll, I'll I'll do a quick self-promoting pitch that I you know I'm I am on a quest to 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 teach the world how to use Power BI the right way for the cool. enterprise. You know, specifically for the for the IT shops and developers out there and. Uh, Anyway, that's that's a lot of the substance of my blog at, at nice. simpleserverbi.blog. Feel free to put the link in the chat, by the way. You, you, oh, you can do all the sure. – you can, people can click away in it. I have no yeah. problem with that yeah. whatsoever. Wait, what's our private chat? Where's the public chat? Uh, I, I closed it, actually, because I'm I'm always worried that I'm going to unmute right, myself well, and I'll, I have, I'll, I have I'll, all that echo. I'll, I'll, let you, I'll let you repost it then. Yeah, okay, you do that. That's cool. Let me try and mute this. Yeah, that's my blog. Fantastic. There you go. I'm doing it. Yeah, I'm, so I'm, I'm working on, I'm working on a post. I, I did, I did post the YouTube video. This is my kind of my, 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 my pattern now is when I have something in my head that I, I want to get out, I'll, I'll usually record a presentation and post it on YouTube and then I'll write a blog post around it. That's what I'm doing with uh, a, uh, a presentation entitled uh, the dimensional dilemma. Why, why don't we dimensionalize our data? There, there are good reasons that it doesn't mm. happen. And so okay. I talk about some of the reasons why it's, it's sometimes it's difficult to do that. Nice. I'll mm -hmm. be following your blog post a lot closer. Okay. One of the things that I, I enjoy about doing this sort of thing, by the way, is it makes me more aware of what everyone's doing and new sort of resources to look at because it's, I find it really difficult to kind of keep up with, with everyone. Um, it's actually not possible because there are lots of people doing lots of things. Um, but then you'll realize that there was someone who's done so much and you've followed very little of what they've, they've done. And I mean this with no disrespect whatsoever. You're one of those people. You've done loads of stuff. But our paths haven't crossed that often. Do you know and, what I'm saying? And, and, and I, you, Ben, I, I haven't been following your live stream until just recently. So, you know, <laughs> tip for tat. <laughs> <Not intentional. Exactly. laughs> Oh man, love it's it. just there's a lot out there. There is a lot out there. A lot out I, there. I noticed recently that I've I've had it, found it really difficult to keep up with the live streams from um, Power BI Tips. They get do Tuesdays on, and Thursdays, yeah. and I'm always busy that time of day. And I really try to get to them, but I I, just, I miss them so often. And um, it's a bit. Sorry, yeah. my dog, my dog's being crazy. Well, and, 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 and you know, and 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 Mike and his group have just just done such a fantastic job for so long. Uh, Mike Carlo and yeah, and, awesome. uh, uh, Seth Bauer. Yeah, um, yeah. In fact, I was just revisiting a a a, a recording yesterday that uh, that Mike did with Steve Campbell. Okay. The, uh, Steve had created has created a, a a number of extensions that will allow you to separate a PBIX into a report and a data model and to be able to reconnect it. And just 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 so useful. Mm. And mm. Uh, Mike has just done a real good job of curating a lot of that content. Nice, that's cool. Yeah, he yeah. does loads. I um, it, it, I I always felt bad about all the Denev stuff that I did. I didn't put any of my um any of my work on his on his Git. Whatever it's called, repository or whatever you want to call mm -hmm. it, because I am—I um, just don't do it because I hate GitHub. 
Um, but it was like, you put it on, and I was like, I, I, I've put some of you on. I think the one time I tried to do it, I made a mistake, and I was like, you know what, I'm, I'm, that, that's me out for a while. I'll come back to it in like a year, in, in, in a year from now. Um, but he's, I have him on, actually, at the end of mid-March, um, Mike will be on, mm-hmm. on, on, on my show, which would be cool. I should look forward to it. Oh, right. anyway, um, let's start to wrap things up because I have a tendency to ramble, which I don't mind doing, but I know we yeah, all have and busy, so do I, and so do busy, I. Busy days. It's Love the lively, uh, the lively chat that we've had. Uh, so many people have, have great things to say. Yeah, I love all the your guest request, request Miguel Myers. You know what? This is, <laughs> I've I've asked him a couple of times, right? And um, I'm, I'm going to be honest. I said to I said to Miguel, I think I asked him in like November, uh, no, early actually, probably in October, if you want to come on. And he was like, uh, give me some time because I'm going to be really busy and um, I'll come on like uh, the start of next year. So it, it'll, be, it'll be on at some point. It's not scheduled yet. Um, mm-hmm. But I need to uh, send him an email and, and, and mock him because since then, I think he's done like, like two or three others. And like, fine, Miguel, whatever. I'm not offended. You just put, you just do whatever everyone else is not mine. Don't, don't worry. I'm, I'm, I'm not going to cry myself to sleep. That's fine. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Did he get the message? <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. So, yeah, I get it. Oh, that's um, awesome. But he'll he'll be on in in, in, a, in a couple of months, no doubt, because we, we we've loosely arranged something. No, yeah, yeah it's good fun. Anyway, everyone in the chat, thank you so much for all your wonderful comments and and the questions. It always keeps entertained as we're talking here. Paul, yeah. thank Look you so much. Look forward to seeing everyone again at, at a yeah. future conference. We got the Power BI Summit coming up, and you know the Power BI Cruise. And, uh, yeah, you, know, if you still you still want to go to Copenhagen and and go on a cruise and you know take some classes. Yeah, exactly. It wouldn't be either. Uh, if you're ever in Germany for one of these things, let me know. I, I'm always yeah. up to, to travel somewhere to go to another Yavol. Um, meeting. Yavol, you know, super. Uh, do you speak German, by the way? Do you have, have you remembered any? Oh, or? I, 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 it's it's uh, <laughs> it's been a long, long time. Yeah. Okay. Fair yeah. enough. So when you have a couple yeah, of drinks, can, it's I always can hear easier. I and understand a lot of conversations, but I, I just my brain doesn't work fast enough to to mm. uh, put the words together. I tell you what gets me now when I go back to English speaking. I mean, I don't go back to the UK very often, um, but when I'm in situations where, whatever, in the UK or where there's lots of English being spoken around me, it drives me crazy because though I can speak German, I can shut it off, right? So uh-huh. if I'm in, if I'm in a bar or whatever or in any social situation, I can just like drown the background noise. I can just shut it off, but when I'm in like England, I can't shut out the English, and I'm not used to it. To hear English all the time around me, and I kind of feel I can hear everyone's conversations, and it's quite oh, interesting. Str- yeah, it's quite strangely overwhelming sometimes. Um, oh, you could we could analyze the heck out of this. This would be <laughs> this would be interesting. You know, German's such a mechanical language where everything is yeah. just very predictable, yeah. and English is the culmination of so many different influences. It's and, so tough. I don't know the brain processes them differently. Yeah. Right. Well, my, my my kids growing up with three languages, right? So um, English from me, German from being in Germany, my wife is Italian. And um, so my daughter, her, her main language is, is, is German. Teaching her English is so confusing because I forget there are so little rules. So like, way that, like for example, in German, the way the vowels sound is how the vowels sound. So yep. e, and U, e and U together is oi. So it's not euro, it's euro. E, U, oi. Right. But I'll say like, oh, when the, in English, these two letters together, they sound that way. And then like 10 words later, those two letters sound completely different. I'm like, oh, God, right, right. I don't know. Yeah, I don't we know. have to learn all of these little workarounds, you know, I before E except after C. And, yeah. You yeah. know, it's just English is just this whole list of exceptions. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. Good yeah, fun. It's what it is. <laughs> what it is. Anyway, see. Your ancestors who did that to it. Actually, my ancestors, I guess. I, I come from British. Oh, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's yeah. a thing. Blame that. Them. The combination of different languages that, that, that came together and, and created. The only thing that we have that's that for me that that's better is just the, you know, none of this <laughs> daddy das din denim and all this. I was like, right, no, just right. the. Yeah, uh, we don't have you know the, the, the gender you know, exactly in, in Ex- English language. And a good way of learning the gender of German words is listen to a German speak English who doesn't speak English that well. For example, they'll say they'll gender the word in English. Like instead of saying like the printer, like it, they'll go like he. Like uh, I was I was printing something and he broke. I was like, what broke? The printer. He broke. Uh the printer ah, broke. Ah, because it's yeah, because it's male. Yeah. 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 How yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. 
Anyway, I'll uh, I'll see. We're just rambling again. I, I do love it, but at some point we have to end. See, Carrie's yeah. already going. Well, this has been lovely. I, I appreciate the invitation. Good. I appreciate uh, the lively chat and the, the opportunity to, to share. Too. And look forward to seeing you out in the in the community again. Sounds fantastic. Look forward to it. Um, thank you, Paul. Thank you, everyone in the chat. Take care, and um, I'll see you next week. All right. Bye bye. Thank you.